What's going on, fellas? You know, every now and then I will make some encouragement videos here and there to encourage you guys out. And it's sad to see that how little encouragement us men need to get it going in life, to get that engine pumping again, to get that spark again in our life. But what's more sad than that to see is that as soon as some woman comes into their life and they think she's the one, they forget about it all. All this encouragement, all this red pill knowledge, everything just goes out the window. You know, a true red pill aware man knows the game. He knows women's nature for real, what it, for what it, what it really is. He knows his own self-worth. So he's not going to fall for that. But guys who claim to be red pill, the fakers, they will fall for it hook, line, and sinker every single time. One of my buddies, I helped him out from his last relationship. He ended up going over to this other fat chick's house and banging her out. Because she's told him that she's going to give him some sort of a gift. And I told him, like, dude, okay, I'll give you that. I'll give you the fact that you go out there just to get the gift. But don't even touch that. Come on. I told him before he went and did that. He said, okay, I won't. And then he sends me a snap. He goes, oh, man, this is some fire. You know what? There's some fire booty. And I said, dude, no, it's not. It's more like a fire hydrant booty. That's how big she is. So, fellas, you have to understand your own self-worth. The reason why us men are going down a very rough path, us men are having a very rough time in this society, finding our path and navigating through this world, is because we don't know our own self-worth. We don't know our own value. And part of it is our fault, and the part of it is the time that we live in. The time that we live in today, in this society, in this time, is just not designed for our success, for men's success. It's for women, at the cost of men. It's not equal. It's, it's, it never was equal back then. Maybe it was more designed for men than women. But now it's way more designed for women than men. But back then, when it was designed for men, mainly, women were taken care of. We still care about women's feelings and their needs. Yeah, sure, there's, there was abuse and women getting uh, hated and this, that, and the other women didn't really have a whole lot of rights and whatever. But there's going to be bad people and good people at every society, at every time, at every generation. That doesn't mean that you suppress one group down just to oppress another group on top of it, right? So, in this video, I kind of want to talk about the actual values that we have as men that are far more valuable than women. Let's start with the financial stability, because you already know I always love talking about money. That makes the world go around. Money makes the world go around. I think, what's his name? Ray Shremard, he, on his one of his songs, This Could Be Us, he says it, it's, it's one of his lines that says money makes the world go around. Fellas, the most successful people in this world when it comes to businessmen, multimillionaires, millionaires, billionaires, are men. Most of them are men. Like, the ratio is not even fair. It's probably like 95 to 5. Don't quote me on this. I'm just kind of making it up out of my butt, you know. <laughs> but because the reason why I'm doing that is because everywhere I everywhere I go, all the real estate companies I've been to so far, it's, I've always seen the big investors because I've talked to a lot of investors are being men. The women are doing the desk job, doing the side jobs for these men. They're helping these be they're the assistants of this, these men. That's why I kind of made that 95 to 5 number. But I mean, I don't know the exact number. So again, don't quote me on that. But you guys understand this though, right? That most of the successful rich people in this world are men than women. Why? Because it's in our DNA to be hardworking, to, be sacri to sacrifice, and to delay the gratification. We have that power more in, in us than women do. Because we're not slaves to our emotions. We have this logical thinking cap capability, way more than women do. Does that, is that to say that women cannot think logically? No, not at all. Sure they can. 
but they have way more feelings and emotions to fight with than we do. And in a sense that all the feelings and emotions that they have are magnified 10, ten times more inside of them than, than us. This is why if you go to a funeral home or a funeral, you'll see the women there are always crying and sobbing or whatever, and the men, they're sad too, but they're not standing there and bawling their eyes out or just screaming and yelling and crying, swearing God's name, this, that, and the other, right? They're stoic. This is why you see that a disaster hits, it's always men coming out and helping the society instead of being scared, instead of being emotional and thinking, man, what do I do? I don't know what to do. That's the first thing women say when hard times hit. I don't know what to do. When you say that, your brain stops thinking. Instead of saying, I can't, I don't know what, I don't know how, the questions you should be asking yourself every single time you face a hardship, every single time you face a uh, bad situation is how. How can I do this? How can I change it? How can I make it better? What do I need to do? Things like that. It opens up your brain. Whenever your brain hears something coming, coming out of your mouth, even though you're thinking that, it magnifies that thought 10 times more when it comes out of your mouth and your ears can hear it. I actually learned that in my psychology class. So I'm not just making that up. Fellas, <clears throat> it takes a lot of hard work, dedication and commitment, as I just said, to make real money. Women just don't simply have that. When you go to look at the corporate scene, corporate America scene, you'll see that the women who are working 40, 50, 60 hours there are miserable with their life, even though they're making bank. They're miserable. And at some point when they hit 40, 45, they just can't keep going. They have to drop their hours or they quit or they find a man and settle down. I promise you, most of these women end up like that. But when you look at a 45-year-old man in there who's probably climbing up the ladder to become the next CEO and and he has way more in his hands to deal with than the woman and he's working 80, 80 hours a week, 80 hours a week is like the usual for him, you will not find him any more happier than that. Sure, he's going to be stressful, absolutely sure. But he, the, the, the drive that he has in him to go out and do it the next day, it just increases every single day. The more success he gets, the more dedicated he gets to his work. The, mo the more drive comes out of him. A well, woman is the complete opposite. Do you know why? Because with success comes more stress. And women can't handle that much stress. I've seen it in my own family. I don't want to give out personal stories about people in my family. That's going to invade their privacy. But there's, it's, it happened every single, in, in every single woman, woman's life in my family. They thought they could do it all, be strong and independent. But... <laughs> They fell straight on their flat. They fell flat, stayed straight on their face. And fellas, now back to that uh, example about my friend I was giving you about sleeping with that fat chick. I promised myself that I'm never sleeping with a fat chick again. Do you know why? Because when you start sleeping with fat chicks, your self worth starts going down. You start feeling low of yourself. You start telling yourself, man, maybe this is the best I can do. I would rather go through a drought, a dry season for a whole five years if I have to, if I don't get laid with anybody who's a seven or an eight or a nine or a 10, but I will not go below that. That's the point I'm in because now I know my self-worth. Sure, is that gonna make my self-worth go down a little bit if I'm not being able to hook up with anyone in five years? Absolutely, sure, but it's still not going to be as detrimental to my health, to my, to my mental health, as if I was going out and sleeping with sixes, fives, and fours, and fat women. Like, don't come at me giving me this crap, oh, I like my women thick. If you could sleep with a bad chick, a baddie, who's a seven or an above, you know you would over this fat girl any day. If two chicks hit you up tonight at the exact same time wanting to meet up and one of them is an eight, one of them is a five 
and you know that both of sleeping with both of them have the exact same rate with uh, for you, you would pick the one who's an eight. Don't even argue me with that, right? Like that's just common sense. So if you could, you would. And you're compensating at that point. Something is lacking in your life, which is why you're compensating for these low quality women. And again, that's also being detrimental to your, to your mental health because you're telling yourself, man, this is the best I can do in my life too. I don't think I can move anywhere further. It's boxing your mind down. Your mind is not being opened up. That confidence that I always preach is, not, is, is disappearing. A lot of, and, and a lot of the times, these fat women, these ugly women, these fours, fives, and sixes, they get the most approaches from guys. So their ego is off the roof, way more than the hot girls sometimes. Most of the time, actually. So when you go approach a hot girl, a hot girl, chances are you would not get rejected from her as you would from the fat girl, contrary to popular belief. You think that, oh man, this hot girl's out of my league, she's gonna reject me, but just go and talk to her. This is how this is what I started telling myself, all right? And I want you guys to telling yourself the exact same thing as well. Is that when you see a woman and it, your heart starts racing, that oh man, you, you get really nervous to go up to talk to her. That's who you need to go to talk to her. If you see a fat woman, you're just like, oh okay, it's not a big deal to go up to talk to her. Don't. Or any woman, if you see and you, you your heart doesn't start racing about going up to her and talk to her, don't even don't even bother. Why? Because every time your heart starts racing like that and you get nervous, blood starts, blood starts rushing in into your system more and more, it's a challenge. And you need to face it. The more you face it, the more accustomed you, you become to it. The more used to it you get. You get more used to it. And before you know, you're banging out seven, nothing but sevens, that's eights and nines. Because finally, you got that game down. You know how to react around them. Because a lot of the times, guys would approach these women and they're so scared because they haven't done this in the past. They don't even know what to say. They just freeze up. So the more you expose yourself to it, the more relaxed you are going to be. It's just like learning a new skill. The first time you did it, is you sucked at it. But the more you practiced at it, you got better at it. Same concept. Next up, what I want to talk about is that... Men are the one who create the world. Everything you see around you was built by a man. Women didn't make a whole lot of things in this world. Next to nothing is what they created. Now don't give me this crap that, oh, women can give birth to men. That's not a credit. That's not something to be proud about. That's your natural given ability. Nature gave that to you. You didn't earn that. All these things that you see that was built by men, it was earned. Men had to work hard for it. What, you didn't have to work hard to give birth. You Just the sole fact of you being a woman, the fact that you being able to carry a baby in your body, the fact that you have eggs, all of this is, is it was given to you. It's just nature taking doing its thing. It's like saying that, oh, as a man, I should be proud because I can make a baby. No, what? Every guy has semen. This is nothing extraordinary about it there's what three four billion women in this planet two three billion women I don't know what the number is so so, so why would you have a superpower when two or two billion other people have the same exact thing you're not special in that regard so everything you see around you fellas even the tampons that women use was created by a man so and you ladies want to come here and talk this strong and independent bullshit with me, huh? Oh, did I just cuss again on my channel? Yep. Whatever. <laughs> Fellas, next thing what I want to what I want to show you guys is that we care and love women a lot more than they care and love us. This is a conversation I had with one of my friends actually. And this is contrary to everything you have heard so far, right? Uh, men cannot love, they cannot, they don't have feelings, they are stoic, they're hard, this, that, and the other. Hear me out. A research has shown, again, I'm not gonna show you any kind of links or nothing because it's your job to go your own, to, to, to go and do your own homework. So you can go find your, find your research your own dang self. Research has, has shown that 
a man's biological imperative is to spread his seed all across the globe. So that's why we always want to uh, sleep with whatever we see, whatever we see attractive walk around. But when we start spending more time with a woman, not just in the bedroom, but outside the bedroom, more and more oxytocin start being released out of our brain, more than women's. And oxytocin is a chemical that makes us bond with them, pair bond with them, emotionally, um, psychologically. And that's why we become more inclined to not leave them after a while. Why? This came from bio, uh, evolution. Back in the caveman days, when women were not as strong and independent as they claim to be now, as they claim to be now, and we didn't have the police and the laws and uh, and everything else to protect us, we men were the protectors of our women and children. So if we got a woman pregnant, because birth control wasn't there either, and she now became very way more vulnerable than she really was, because women are vulnerable to begin with; they're weaker creatures than us physically. So when now they become more vulnerable, especially within that nine month period when she really can't do anything when she's carrying a baby. And after the baby, now she has to not only care about herself, but also the baby. Now, if we left her, she's screwed. This is why we had this oxytocin system going on in our, in our body so that we don't leave her. There's been studies shown that a man who's been with a woman longer was shown other more attractive women to him. And he still picked his girl over these other women that was shown to him. Why? Because of this oxytocin uh, system, whatever th this this neurological system that's going on in his in his mind. Women, on the other hand, don't have this. Why? Again, back to the caveman days. I love going back to the caveman days. Just wouldn't want to live there back then. <laughs> If a woman's man died back then, all she had to do is move her belongings to the next man. If she was mentally caught up with this man so much, she wouldn't be able to do that. She would be very damaged in, in the back of her head. And that's why women don't release the oxytocin as much as we do because they don't have an imperative to pair bond with us. Because they know that if we leave... They can take it to somewhere else. But with that also being said, high body count works against them because their brain works at a different setting than ours when they sleep with more and more men. Their brain starts to, what do you call it, redirect its path in a different way than we do. We, we kind of have like an on and off switch. We, we can turn it on if we want to haul around. We can turn it off if we want to pair bond with someone. And oxytocin helps us too. But women don't have that. After she surpasses, uh, after she passes two, two guys that she sleeps with, the, 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 the more guys she sleeps with after the first two, the further away she gets away from her ability to pair bond with a, with a guy. Studies have shown it. Scientific research has shown it. I'm not making any of this up. Again, it's your job to go find it. Uh, if you're going to be lazy sitting on your ass and expecting me to give you all of it, I'm not going to do that. I always preach self-improvement. Self-improvement, not Zeke, if, Zeke improvement. Zeke is not going to come into your life and improve your life. You have to improve it on your own, on, on your own self. So, fellas, these are three main important points that I, 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 I just want to show you, right? Because we are capable of loving them more than they love us. And again, if you look at it, they really don't have a whole lot of things going on for themselves. They're under student loan debt. They're not as strong as us. They, don't, they have a bad attitude nowadays. They don't even know how to cook clean or suck us off dry anymore. They, they think, oh, cooking clean is bad. They look, down, they look down on it. It's frowned upon. So we don't really have a whole lot of things to love them but themselves. Love them for but themselves. So we love them for who they are, but we always hear this. They don't love us for who they are, right? So it's us who really have the real love for them, for people who really care for who they are, not for what they can do for us. So many sexless marriages are out there. And if you, if you look into it, the husband still loves the woman a lot more than the woman loves the husband. The woman doesn't even love the husband. She's just with him because he uh, takes care of her needs. He's just a walking ATM at that point. 
Don't ever let anybody tell you that you're disposable, fellas. Sure, when she's young and hot and going in college from age 16 to 24 or, or in her high school days when she's like, if, when she's from age 16 to 24, I understand she's hot and young and, young and all the guys are atten uh, giving her attention and she walks on and on this, she walks around with her nose up everywhere and acting stuck up and snobby. Again, let me give you a quick example of snobbiness and stuck upness, all right? It's not just rich girls who are acting like brats. Stuck up means the fact that, oh, I find you attractive. I'm going to come up to you and talk to you as a guy, but, sorry, sorry, as a girl, you find me attractive, you come talk to me, it's your job to turn all the buttons on in me. I'm not going to give out any effort to get to know you, to ask you any questions. I'm just going to answer what you're, what you're telling me. I'm just going to sit there and I'm just going to let you direct this conversation where it goes. If you say something that I don't like, I'm going to reject you. But if you are able, able to turn all the right buttons on, I'll go along with you. And if I'm not even attracted to you, I'm still going to waste your time. I'm not going to tell you this uh, right off the get-go, but I'm still going to drag you along. I'm still going to waste your time. All of this is stuck-upness. People don't even know this. They don't even know what it really means to be a stuck-up. B-I-T-C-H. So that's why like, they don't even comprehend. They can't even comprehend when you call them stuck-up. They, 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 the only thing they think is that, oh, I'm not rich. I'm not a brat. I'm not a rich brat. So no, I'm not stuck-up. <laughs> right. And this is coming from all this attention that they're getting, guys. And yeah, I understand we're at, we're at a disadvantage, but just wait it out a little bit longer. Keep your head straight. Keep grinding. I promise you better days are coming. Better days are coming for me. Back when I was a sophomore and freshman in, in college, I was miserable, man. I was like, man, this can't be it. All these girls are rejecting me. I'm broke as a joke. I mean, college just started. I don't even know if I'm going to finish this. This is really hard, my degree that I'm in. And now I got one more year left and I'm making more money than ever. I'm sleeping with beautiful women. Is, is it still requiring me a little bit of work to approach girls and this, that, and the other every, every now and then whenever I see them? Yeah, of course. But I, talk, I already talked about this in my past videos, guys. It's, if you have your standards up, you're not going to be wasting as much time because most girls out here are, 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 are ugly or fat or overweight or chubby. Even if it's chubby, just ignore her. If she's not in shape, don't even, don't even bother. So if you have your standards up, most of these girls you're going to see out and about ain't even going to meet your requirements. So you're not going to waste a whole lot of time approaching girls. You're going to see one or two girls here and there maybe or maybe three or four girls a week. And you go up to and talk to three, four girls. That's not really wasting a whole lot of time. And if you get rejected by it, I would rather want you get rejected by hot girls than fat and ugly girls. That kills, nothing else kills your self-esteem, your ego, than getting rejected by a fat girl. So that's why you'd rather do that by a hot girl, fellas. That's another reason why you should not be approaching these butterball turkeys. The average height of a woman in the United States is five foot four, and her, her average weight is 168 pounds. 168 pounds woman who's five foot four looks like a butterball turkey. It's disgusting. It's gross. It's grotesquely overweight. You need to stop it. Hope this video made sense, guys. Again, don't let anybody ever tell you that you are no, you are nobody. You're disposable. Women are the disposable ones after they turn age 25 26 they have nothing else to offer at that time but as we men as we age we have more and more resources to offer to society we become the eye candy we become the catch people are like oh who is he okay what's his name we don't ever care about women we don't we don't you don't see society say oh okay well, dang she's so hot at age 26 27 sure there are girls out there who hold it on a little bit longer but for the majority of the part when she turns 27, 28, even 30, 30 when she's 30, it's, it's a done deal for her. People usually don't care that much about those, those aged women. It's the man that they're asking at that time. So we have way longer after we, turn success, after we become successful. We have a lot longer to ride this success out and enjoy this success. Let's say you turn successful at age 30. You have till age 60, 70, till the day you die if you hold on to your money to enjoy it. But women's success is their looks, is their youth, which only lasts till age 25, 26.
max 27 28 max like it after 20 it is just it is it's downhill at a very rapid pace so they have only so long not even a whole decade they have less than a decade to enjoy their success and if that doesn't give you a jump start in your life right now if that doesn't motivate you if that doesn't tell you that man i am the prize because you are fellas we are the prize we are not disposable if we become really successful make a whole lot of money and we get taken out of the society it's gonna hurt the society a lot more the economy a lot more than a hot girl if she gets taken out taken out because all she's offering is her looks that doesn't help the society at any way shape form or fashion or the economy so if that doesn't help you understand this big picture look at this big picture i don't know what will but i still have hope in you i know i believe in you i believe in every single man out there and i know that men are waking up more and more and we need to keep spreading this message to make wake up more and more men hope this video made sense like comment, subscribe share this video to your friends until next time stay blessed stay beautiful and above all stay classy